How should people make good rational choices? A couple of weeks back, we saw a model of decision making that looked something like this. We said that the utility of a given option or a given product is a function of the combined utility that is delivered by each of its attributes. In particular, if you can decompose a product into multiple attributes, and you can assess the importance of each of those attributes to your decision, then the utility is the sum of W, which is the weighting that you place on a given attribute, multiplied by the utility of that attribute, added across all of the attributes. A simpler version of that same model is the second equation that you see in this chart, where you simply multiply the weighting of a given attribute by the value of that attribute, WI multiplied by XI, and add that up across all of the attributes. Now, if you really think about that systematic form of decision making, it requires a lot of effort. How does a consumer, for example, choose between two products, product A and product B? How does a policymaker decide which of two policy options he or she should choose? Here's what they need to do. They need to decompose that policy or that product into as many relevant attributes as they think are important. Then they need to come up with an importance weighting for each of those attributes. Finally, they need to evaluate each attribute on a scale, multiply the weight by the value of the attribute, add up the total to give them the utility or value of every given option, and then pick the option that actually provides the highest value. This is a fairly complex process. Most of us don't engage in that process for every single decision that we make. Instead, we follow something called intuition. What is intuition? And I'm going to read for you a definition of intuition that Robin Hogarth first proposed in his book. He said that intuitive choices or judgments are reached without little apparent awareness, that in fact they typically involve very little conscious deliberation. Sometimes we make intuitive judgments in the snap of a finger, we call them gut feel reactions, we call them visceral reactions. Sometimes you go to a store and we simply know what we are going to buy by just looking at products. Or we look at policy options and we know what the right thing is. So what is intuition and where does it come from? The first thing we want to keep in mind is that intuition is not necessarily emotion. When you have a good intuition, it doesn't mean that you're just acting on an emotional response. What it instead means is that you have somehow developed a fast approach, a sophisticated yet quick approach to making choices and to making judgments. Where does that sophistication come from? Typically, it comes from expertise. Think about a doctor. A doctor has spent 10 or 15 years of their lifetime seeing patients who present themselves with a certain set of symptoms, and they have learned the correlation between those symptoms and a particular disease. It's not that they have a mathematical equation in their head, but every time they see a certain cluster of symptoms happening at the same time, they know it's got to be disease A or disease B or disease C. That is intuition. That is a learned set of intuition because what the expert has done is they have accumulated their knowledge over a period of time, they have somehow assessed correlation between different variables, and they have then come up with a quick response to that particular set of stimuli. Likewise, a consumer could have an intuitive set of preferences that they use in making choices. I know what sort of colors I like, I know what sort of fragrances I like, and I know what sort of visual appearance I want. So when I go to a store and pick up a product like a quilt or a product of art, I don't necessarily spend the time decomposing that product into its attributes because I know what I like when I see it. That again is intuition. So in sum, you could think about intuition as, as being something that arises from expertise, it arises from a vast experience of dealing with similar tasks in the, in the past, and the process that is used to arrive at that intuitive uh, judgment is something called pattern matching. What is pattern matching? It is a process where people look at their historic database, if you will, of similar choices that they've made, make a comparison and say, gee, this situation looks a whole lot like something else I did two years back, retrieve from memory what they did there, and apply that to the present situation. So pattern matching can be a very quick process and a very seemingly effortless process, but it doesn't mean that it is made mindlessly. It simply means that the individual is using a lot of rich history uh, in order to make that quick intuitive decision.
Very quickly, when does good learning happen based on experiences in the past? Good learning happens when you get feedback, when that feedback is quick, and when the feedback is unambiguous. Think about a weather forecaster. Weather forecaster makes a prediction like it's going to rain. Within a day, they know whether it has rained or not. There is no ambiguity to the fact that it has rained or not rained. And the feedback is quick. As a result, weather forecasters not only get quick feedback and unambiguous feedback, they get lots of it because they make these judgments every single day. Research shows that, in fact, weather forecasters are fairly well calibrated. What does that mean? It means they have a good intuition about how much they know. And in fact, when they say that they are confident, they are generally fairly confident uh, that that outcome is going to happen. When they say they are not confident, then in fact, they are truly not confident. But they have a good handle on how much they know. Finally, it's helpful to compare an intuitive process of decision making with a more analytical process of decision making. On the right hand side, we've talked about what an analytical process looks like. What you do is you look at your past experiences, your past decisions, and use those decisions to formulate a model of relevant attributes and the importance of those attributes. You then use the model in a very systematic, deliberate, and computational manner to use data from the existing situation and make a choice. On the other hand, Intuitive processes also use history, but they use history to develop this engine that we call intuition. Think of intuition as a regression equation sitting in your head, which is quick and which lets you make decisions in the snap of a finger. And it is that intuition that can be trained effectively, and you can learn intuition by getting good feedback.